But that's it. It looks like the thingy is on. So hello, internet. We've arrived. <laughs> um, I don't know what that voice is for. Um, <laughs> but hi. Uh, so hey. today we are. <laughs> Uh, today we are here with the Badass Bitches Book Cult Book Club Place Thing Time and we are reading, dear god, I don't want to like screw this up, uh, Nidhi Okorafor's Who Faced Death and I really hope that I got that right. Where did Shayna go? Wasn't Shayna here like a second ago? What happened to Shayna? <laughs> oh, there she is. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, we're back. We're all here again. I don't know what just went on. She wanted to swap um, spots, so now we've Yeah, <laughs> I guess that, that, that has to be all that was. Um, okay, so we're spot. here. We're here. Um, this was Talia Shvari's pick. So I'm going to let Talia, do you have the description for the book open, or do you want me to read the, just the book description? I have it. You can read it, though. Uh, you, okay, okay, all right. Uh, that's great because I don't have it open. One second. I'll okay, fix well, that. I'll just give me a second. I got it. 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 Okay. All right. So, Who Fears Death? Uh, keep in mind, this book was published in, I think, June 2011 or 2010 originally. So, this book is exactly about 10 years old almost. Okay. Um, in a post apocalyptic Africa, the world has changed in many ways. Yet, in one region, genocide between tribes still bloodies the land. A woman who has survived the annihilation of her village and a terrible rape by an enemy general wanders into the desert hoping to die. Instead, she gives birth to an angry baby girl with hair and skin the color of sand. Gripped by the certainty that her daughter is different, special, she names her Onisonwu, which means who fears death in an ancient language. It doesn't take long for Anya to understand that she is physically and socially marked by the circumstances of her conception. She is Iwu, a child of rape who is expected to live a life of violence, a half-breed rejected by her community. But Onya is not the average Iwu. Even as a child, she manifests the beginnings of a remarkable and unique magic. As she grows, so do her abilities. And during an inadvertent visit to the spirit realm, she learns something terrifying. Someone powerful is trying to kill her. Desperate to elude her would-be murderer and to understand her own nature, she embarks on a journey in which she grapples with nature, tradition, history, true love, and the spiritual mysteries of her culture, and ultimately learns why she was given the name she bears. Who fears death? So this was Talia's pick for us. So Talia gets to tell us why she chose this book and she gets to give us her thoughts as our opening. And if you are present and in the chat, as I see a couple of people apparently already are watching, please do drop in with your own thoughts uh, and feelings and revelations. Um, and keep in mind anybody watching now or in the future that they're gonna be spoilers. We spoil. We spoil. Spoil we in this spoil going to rotten. Thank you. Spoil. <laughs> <laughs> we rip the stores open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. We also like rip ourselves open from time to time, not in like a literal graphic sense, but like you know things that occasionally require um, pre tears. I don't think we've ever actually cried, but it's it's gonna happen eventually at some point. We just gonna be like, oh, oh no, no, I, I cried. I cried. Oh, you have? bitch. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll just say it. Anyway, Talia, take it from here, please. Uh, with the, I, I loved it. Okay. This this book does what books are supposed to do. Right? They tackle hard subjects, etc. And the book does open with something that was very near and dear to my heart when she said that she was, you know, 16 when her father died. And, like, my father died a few, you know, some years ago when I was young. Not that young, but I was young. And it did mark me, just like it marked her. Not exactly, but you know, emotionally. And so there was a there was a lot that I could I could I could feel that I could I could connect with the character then in, in a lot of ways, like dealing with that grief and in some ways dealing with it in uh self-destructive manners and you know, of her trying to find her place in this world and you know 
recognizing that you have to be brave despite you know what other people say you are and you have to find and mark your own path and so i was able to connect with the character like that um so the when i first got the um the the blurb you know download whatever your, your preview i saw that and that is what said yeah something about this really you know like this very specific opening scene connected with me in a very deeply personal manner and so i picked the book first and that's the story i'm going with Okay, and so outside of this connection to the um, initial circumstances of the main mm -hmm. character and the opening, you said you like this book. Some people already have expressed that they disagree. They did not like this book. So tell us what you liked about it. Tell us what you love. Tell us what your overall impressions about this book were. I I like that she was just she was just bold and she tackled subjects that were uncomfortable. And she tackled them in a manner that left people uncomfortable. And there's a certain level of bravery that it takes to do something like that. That it takes to say, well, I'm going to normalize this very uncomfortable topic. Right? And it was another uncomfortable topic. I was reading the, the, um, the article that inspired the story in the first place. And I posted it on my socials and so on. And... Like that bravery to tackle these subjects, that was, I felt like if I didn't, you know, like if I allowed myself to be uncomfortable, that'd be a weak ass bitch for it. So <laughs> I bowed through the difficult parts. I cried during the parts that made me cry, you know, and, and it's like, okay, if I'm going to write a book, these are the emotions I need to I, I need to be able to tap into emotions like this. If my character is afraid, you must be afraid. If my character is happy, you must be happy. If they are sad, you must be sad. And this book um, just, it was a very violent roller coaster of emotions for me. And like, it's like, we've had books like this. We've had a couple books like this that have done that to us. Mm -hmm. And this book was. Uh, very unexpected. There, there was a lot that was unexpected. And I, I like that. I like that, you know, I'm usually really good at seeing what's coming next. I'm usually really good at saying, okay, well, this is the blurb. These are the characters. I know what's going to happen. And that didn't happen in this book at all for me. Interesting. Do you, would yeah. you feel like that surprise was stronger than the surprise you felt with uh, Space Between Worlds? Yes. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't feel like that. Like I, um, definitely, I think that there were some things that I think didn't you expected. feel. Yeah, yeah. Like I think that there's very little that I didn't expect that happened in this book, aside from some of the things that were, like you mentioned, um, they were very graphic, situ like situations. And, right. and when I say graphic, I don't mean that they were graphic, because I think that they were definitely not written in an explicit way. Um, yeah, but it was still graphic because but it was graphic for yeah. me. Yeah, it was still it was still graphic. And can I say like this? This book, like especially that whole first section, is just full of a lot of triggers. Yes, a lot, yes. Of, a lot of triggers. There are, and so there's like, so you know, we should keep that in mind. I think for anybody again watching now or in the future, content warnings, um, rape. Oh yeah, rape. content warnings, uh, female circumcision, uh, content warnings, slavery. <laughs> I, I my brain is like bullying there was a lot of bullying as well of bullying. there's a lot of racial murder. discrimination murder yeah definitely genocide genocide yeah this was a heavy so, read it was a oh, very yeah. heavy read um so yeah you're welcome yeah. so who would like to go next said <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> I'll go. go yeah. to Brie. Oh yeah, because Brie uh, had expressed that you didn't really like this. Yeah, so, so I'll play the uh, the opposite side right now. I, I took notes while you were talking, Dahlia, because I was like, let me see what I can, uh, what I feel like saying. So where you felt a very strong emotional connection to the character, I did not. I mm -hmm. didn't. I was not able to connect to her in a way that I was able to feel those strong emotions when things happen. There were a couple of situations where I did, 
Um, but overall, as an entire character, as an entire story, I was just reading a book. You know, it wasn't like, for instance, right. uh, Ray Bear or The Space Between Worlds, where I was right. like, oh, my God. Like, you know, so for me, it was a little different of an experience. Mm-hmm. Um, I do agree that she was bold. And I agree that she tackled a lot of issues that I'm sure we all feel strongly as as women, women of color. And um, but just that you know, the female circumcision, uh, female sexuality, um, genocide, and just the killing of people for being different. So for that, she was bold. I will say that I like that. And that was a check for the book. Um, But, oh, and then I didn't expect the ending, but after I read the ending, I was like, oh, it it was foreshadowed. But when it was foreshadowed in the beginning, I was just thinking of it as like female oppression. You know, I was like, oh, yeah. he's just saying like, oh, if you got pregnant, the whole world would go to hell, you know, and it's like, no, that was actually foreshadowing. So that was that was interesting. It was an interesting ending. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing I'll say is I think the trouble I had with this book was the pacing. I think the way it was yeah. paced, that it was laid out for, I, yeah. for long chunks. So for, for instance, in the beginning, I felt like it was a lot of telling. I was just being told a lot of things. And so I wasn't interested. And then in the middle, a a lot of stuff just happened. And I didn't necessarily know why or where they were going or what they were doing. And then like in the end, stuff happened. But there wasn't, it didn't keep me engaged. So the pacing Mm. was just not for me personally. It was hard to keep me interested. I kept reading the book because I wanted to come here and hang out with you girls for a couple of hours. (laughs) Um, But it was hard. It was hard, Talia. Okay, I'm done. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll 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 tail on to that. I will I will fully admit I I had to put this book down. I couldn't finish it because there were a lot of triggers. And then you know now now that I think of it, like the well, actually before before I get into any of that, do not do not do the Audible book, and I will tell mm-hmm. you why. It's whitewashed. I will, it was so bad. It is so bad. It is so bad. It's completely it whitewashed. Time. I yeah, so did I. Just to be I had to, I had to put it on two. I had to put she on two. She was so slow. The accent was so oh, terrible. Terrible. Awful. Terrible. I, refund. I, I got looked- a refund right before I came in here. <laughs> Same. 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 So do not, do not, whatever you do, do not so download bad. the Audible book. It is terrible. I, I even looked up the, the narrator who, who does the narration. She's a white woman doing woman. a very... Thick, yeah, British woman doing a very bad. thick it's, it's African I, African accent. It's terrible. I would even say terrible. it's akin to like blackface mm. in a way because it was like it yeah. was cartoonish. It wasn't respectful at all. I didn't think. Oh but yeah, I, no, it was. It was terrible. I think like that that whole like African accent too. Like, bro, that's a continent. Yeah. Which accent yeah. are you aiming for? I mean, there, what's called there, there it's not countries. available. What? It was it was nice. terrible. I it tell you hard. what, whoever whoever did the audio recording for the space between us should should reread this book. Mm. I think that would do it better justice, honestly. Um, but yeah, so first of all, whoever is watching this, people like don't 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 bother with the audio book. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. It's terrible. Like that that to me was like a big reason why I wanted to just put it down and I didn't have I didn't have the time to go figure out and download like the ebook and start, you know, trying to read it for myself. I'm I'm too bu- too busy <laughs> to to try and sit and read anything anymore. I have to listen to these things and, and multitask um to, to fit it into my everyday life. But I mean after after that though, I think again it was it was a lot of triggers. There's a lot of things I think for me going on right now emotionally uh, for myself in the world. Like I just had a very close relative pass away last week too. And I'm going to the funeral here in a couple of days. And it was just too much emotionally for me going on to, to really be able to sit with my feelings about things that are going on externally to, to sit and, and figure out, you know, how I felt about this book. And for, and so for me, it was, you know, I, I had trouble, you know, one, connecting with my own feelings and kind of trying to separate the things that I was feeling outside of this book with the things I was feeling because of this book. Um, But second, like, I think, you know, I kind of, I identify with the pacing comment, like, you know, there's a lot of things going on at the beginning of this where I was like, Whoa, what's, what's, what's happening. I'm being told a lot of things, you know, and, you know, in my mind, like a lot of graphic things are happening, you know, maybe a little past trauma is being relived. Um, 
and and about and once I got to like the warrior section, I was like, I was I was kind of past it all. Like I couldn't, I couldn't square with it. I couldn't stick mm-hmm. with it. It was just it was just too much for me. Um, and I tried. I like I know I picked a book that was you know you know pretty like emotional and and you know very very like tiring because of that and stuff. So I was trying my best to try and stick with it and you know try and give it that due justice that I gave to uh, to the Marrow Thieves, but. I think, um, you know, the difference between I felt like with the Marrow Thieves and this one is that this one is just it's it's it comes out punching and swinging and it just it doesn't stop. It goes like the full 10, 10 rounds. And I'm like, I couldn't I, I had to tap out. It was too much for me. Uh, Kara, I think you're hey, muted. muted. Sorry, I was I was muted. My bad. Um, it's because there's always like random background noise, like my cat's yelling at me. So. Um, but I was saying, Seidel, you take it, and I'll I'll go last. <laughs> um, so I have Before not finished. I'm halfway through now, uh, and I am suffering from the plague of the audiobook. So because life has been crazy, I this is the first time I'm actually even doing an audiobook because I always literally read the book. And I said, you know what? You can work this in. You want to be here, so like just get the audiobook and get it done. And when it starts, and then she does the introduction, I'm like, oh, she's probably just doing the intros because she's like a British lady. It's fine. I don't know the story it's about. Maybe it'll work. Let's see what happens. And then it starts and I'm like, ah, oh, just pretend. Just just suspend all of the disbelief that you could possibly suspend to like invest in her voice and her telling of the story so you can believe yeah. it. It was very cringy. I agree 100%. Um, and I also agree with the comment of, I think the from from where I'm at so far anyways, the pacing of the content, it is so much and so heavy. Um well written, I will say. Like it, mm-hmm. it 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 didn't like you said, it didn't feel graphic in the sense of um it was explicit, but I mean it is a graphic content. And so I in my opinion it was well handled, but I think in terms of how where it came in the book, where it came in the story, it just kind of felt all at once you're diving head first into this thing mm. and uh, um i don't think i was 100 percent ready to be uh kind of held against the ropes like that <laughs> <laughs> all at once um i i'm in, i am indifferent so far i'm enjoying what i'm reading i don't hate it yet <laughs> you know that i like intend not hating it but just kind of from everyone's consensus they're just like no this is not for me yeah. um so I don't hate it, but I don't. All, I don't also feel as passionately about um, the main character as you do. So I, I think, I vibe with her, but there's this kind of disconnect in the, I guess, writing mm. style of it, where it feels like um, it doesn't feel like I'm hearing a story of a friend who's gone through something difficult. Mm-hmm. It feels like I'm hearing the outline of a story that wants to be told. You're you're, you're reading a book. You're, you're, yes. Yeah, you got that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I um uh, not I, I think I think the book might have been a little on the personal side for me because my father died at home, you know, like we were all there, like yeah. heart attack, and then he's gone. And so um I remember somebody saying they didn't know that I was in a room in a bathroom and we had started this course shortly after my father died a couple of months, and this girl said Nadine and her sister Nadine well some two of us and she said their father being dead is just their personality my father didn't been dead less than six months <laughs> and the book starting there i'm sorry could you just give sense. me a name so Irrelevant. that i know who to throw hands at off the internet, off the yeah. internet yes. yeah after this we'll discuss <laughs> So I kind of got in trouble for bullying her, right, afterwards. So she kind of got what was coming to her. And you know I can be mean. You know I can be really, really mean. Nah, yeah, you're I mean, queen of petty. I don't, I don't doubt that you um, just gave queen. all the things. Yeah. Chaos anyway. of, you know, goddess chaos. But anyway, <laughs> uh, my, so, my, so the point is, she started My husband is very book. confused right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So the book starting there with that, it felt like like I'd I'd, I'd, int- I'd be introduced to new people, and that would. And the thing is, she was right. It was my personality, 
That is who I was. I was a girl whose father died. And it was such a watershed moment for me. It was such a watershed moment for her. That she didn't start with her birth. She didn't start with her mother's, you know, with her conception. Which you would think would be, you know, central to this story. It's in the, it's, it's in the, um, the blurb, right? It, she didn't start there. She started with the most important moment in her life. And that was the day that the person that she loved the most died. Right? And it caused that disjoint. And sometimes I'm talking about my son. And, and I became very disjointed after my father died. Right? And like I, I did worry that this book was too personal. As in, there's stuff that I would get that maybe someone else who hasn't been through it wouldn't get. And like so that first uh that uh, the book is in three sections three parts and that first part that was that felt like me talking about something you know me sharing a story like i'd be disjointed and like okay i will tell you sometimes i'd be like oh and by the way so 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 is the case and she'd be like what you're doing that thing again where you're starting in the middle of a conversation yeah yeah tell it tell it to start all the time she sent, me, she sent me she sent me a message right like a voice note or a, or a or a text message and i'd be like you're doing it again and i have to type back you need to tell me the whole sentence yeah. where's the beginning of this thought where's the beginning of this miguel, miguel tells me he said he just says you're doing that thing again right so anyway um so she feels othered because of her situation. Uh, I liked how her mom and her stepfather met, and I love that she referred to him as her father. He was her father. I right? okay. I haven't I haven't had the chance to expand on my own thoughts and feelings on this yet, so I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt. Mm. I apologize. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Um, go ahead. I have like a mul I have like a multi layered feels all about this book from like the craft yeah. side and the pacing side all the way to like the emotions and the graphic slash not graphic slash graphic as shit stuff right <laughs> like I had I like woo, woo. yeah that's this is mess me right now um there's there's some things that I've been learning about what I like to read and how I like to read it that have really come up a lot since I've been reading like lots since I've been reading lots more of like pre-published and unpublished work. Uh and like trying to to keep an eye for like what is what it what does it look like to have a good pace or what does tension look like when it's done well and stuff mm. like that. And I think that something that really brought home the difference in writing between now and what we celebrated 10 years ago this book mm. is a really good example of that because i think that if i'd read this before i'd been so conditioned to read what i've been reading recently um and that's something i think that a lot of people have noticed too is that one of the reasons that things like thrillers are such a big part of the market now is that tension right like people mm. enjoy reading where you have all that increased tension straight throughout everything that you're reading in that book. Um, and then you don't really release that tension until the end or just before the end. And then, you know, the rest of the book is just like the rest of your exhale, you know, <laughs> like mm -hmm. that, that's what that is. Yeah. Um, and I don't think, I'm not, not saying that this wasn't relevant 10 years ago, but I don't think that we felt the same way about how much we needed tension in our reading 10 years ago especially not in our fantasy and our science fiction, which is what this is, right? This mm. is a post-apocalyptic um, future we're looking at. And <clears throat> I'm comparing that book to, to things like The Space Between Worlds, which is which honestly is still just number one right now on like my the books that I've read in the last decade. I think like it's just... <laughs> yeah, it's very incredible. easily, very I'm easily just, top 10. Easily top, like I'm a fangirl now. I ordered a signed copy. <laughs> Oh, like, awesome. She responded I, to my comments on Twitter. Right? Um, she liked Twitter when I was like, flail a space between worlds too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like all of that happened. Um, but when you're looking at stuff like that, that's much more recent, right? Uh, compared to things like from 10 years ago. I think that the 
the content, like that style of setup is not very different. I think that in Raybera as well, which was also based on, um, which, in, well, I'm not sure if this, if, if, uh, if, uh, Who Fears Death is, is a, like, based in West African um, cultures or a different part of Didn't the continent. Did it say at the end, was it Sudan? Or it, it was Sudan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was based yeah, on, it was based a, on Sudan. about real circumcision in Sudan. Um, that, yeah, you're right. Thank you for that. So, so I think that storytelling coming out of parts of the world on that side of the, like, of the world, right? Like on that hemisphere as opposed to this hemisphere. I think that storytelling looks different. I've been doing a lot of research and a lot of like digging into things like uh, like Kisha Tenketsu and like four acts and you don't have like that five act structure, but instead of that drop there where you normally have a falling action, you have like a twist that brings something else entirely. And the whole coming before that is like just about rising tension and things like that. And um, I realized that what this book did a lot in those first sections is that it was, I think, about building small tensions all over. Like there was a lot of tension being built, but not all in like one place or one direction. Like she started with what you described, Talia, as her watershed moment with her father's death. And then we got a lot of context around why that death was important, around mm -hmm. why that death meant so much to her, right? Like we started with this one thing and then we learned about all of this other stuff that happened around this one thing. And then once that was established as a foundation for us, we moved on to something else. And there was this one important moment. And then we learned what happens around that one important moment. Mm -hmm. And it kind of builds in that way. Um, and I think that that's tough to pull off now in a book because of the way you experience tension. Like, I don't think it's that this whole beginning was not tense. We definitely had moments where we were like, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, I think in particular which i'm sure all of you also know exactly what i'm thinking about yep. um, like th these things definitely happen i think in that whole like all of the setup that came and the very beginnings of this book and like even halfway into that book you know but uh but the pace like i think like like multiple like several of you have mentioned already that pace was much slower and that building mm. tension was built very differently to what we experience what we read nowadays right and I think that as far as craft goes, I do think that there was a lot of telling, but even that telling, mm. you may not be experiencing a story in the way that we experience stories that are told in like first person or, or deep, uh, deep point of views, like deep third and deep first person point of view. But, um, and not to say, I mean, this was, I mean, it's not like this was like third person or anything, right? Like <laughs> this was- like, Yeah, it was first person. Right. but. Uh, but um, even though it was first person, she was still telling us a story before we sat in her, because, and that's the concept of the book, right? Like if, um, for those who have read it and for, for those who are welcoming spoilers, because Ollie better be welcoming spoilers, like Ollie, hey, you all know. <laughs> um, this is actually Onye telling her story to someone who is taking it down on a laptop. Someone is writing down her story on a laptop, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and so that style makes sense, like it gels for me, you know? And when we look at stories that come out of like Asia, um, the Asian continent, the African continent, so many of them are oral stories. They come from an oral tradition. And I think that if we told the story in that way with that in mind, that telling makes more sense and that telling from like one perspective, like this is the moment that happened, right? And everybody can say, okay, so who gives a shit about this moment? And then you context, but, but then you contextualize that moment. And suddenly when you reflect on the moment that you were told at the beginning, it, it's so much heavier now, right? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if anything that I've just said makes sense. <laughs> no, like I got the same issues with pacing until I realized that that is what was happening. She was speaking yes. to a person, taking it down on a laptop. And at first I didn't get when it was, it was like, okay, well, you know, okay, this happened to me when I was 22, going on 23, and then this happened, and then that, that it was, it was like, okay, so that's happening. And, but it's, you, you know, I got to that point and that, okay, it made a little bit of sense. And then I got, when I realized when 
this was taking place, which was her expecting to die. It's like, okay, I'm going to just tell you the story as best as I could because I have a very, very limited time frame to, yeah. to tell you. And this story, because... Again, we know that we storytelling have to, is... But, there's, but they're different. Okay, so Brie, I think Brie has something to say as well. But yeah. I think that there, is, oh. there are important things to, to consider in the context of, yes, she's telling a story to someone and she has a limited time, but this is also a fucking book that's going to yeah. be published so that somebody yeah. else has to read. Right? Brie, go ahead. Oh, I just had a question because I, again, I listened to the audio book and so I, I had the same idea. I was like, I need to do things while I'm listening. Um so I might have missed some things. So I found out that she was typing it when they said she was typing it in her jail cell at the end. Was there a reference closer to the beginning? Yeah, yes. there's a reference oh. closer to the beginning where kind she says... Kind of at says, the end of part two. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah, she says something mm -hmm. about um, about how it's a good thing this can fit on your laptop. My story can fit on your laptop yeah. or something like that. Uh, okay, yeah. I did um, get the impression... The, like, I was going to say, like, I didn't get that impression in, until, like, end of part two. But I yeah, felt like if we would have... I would have known that, like in part one, I feel like, like in a lot my would have mind, changed. A lot, a lot would have changed. changed. Yeah, yeah, like I so, would have been like more mentally, like, oh, okay, yes, because part yeah. one to me mm, felt like she was breaking the fourth wall a little bit. Yeah, and that was yeah. a little strange. Again, because when you read a novel, you kind of again we were right. going into this thinking that it's a novel. Mm. So I went into it expecting to be immersed. And then instead there was that fourth wall. She's kind of talking to us, and then there's references. I got it later. Later. That yeah. it's like, oh, yeah. she's telling her story in a jail cell. So, so Brandon mentions, yeah, it, it does. It does. It does it differently. So Brandon says that it's also a big issue uh, with pacing for Mullen Jones' Black Leopard Red Wolf because it's the main character retelling their experience and it sometimes comes across as unreliable and disjointed, which an unreliable main character, unreliable viewpoint is not an uncommon thing in mm. storytelling fiction, novel writing, right? And he says for some, himself included, uh, it's sometimes pleasant to feel challenged by the reading of it or that you can't trust what's being told entirely. Um, now, I haven't actually read uh, Black Leopard Red Wolf yet. Uh, it is on my forever growing to be read list. Uh, and I absolutely should read it sometime soon. And hopefully I will. Maybe we should put it, we should, we should add it to like this it's list. It's <laughs> very deep on the pile right. of... Yeah, of, like books, books yeah. for book club. Just get pulled out of wherever it is on the pile and shoved to the top, right? Like that. <laughs> Which is why I had like a whole bunch of books from like eighteen whatever. Right, right. That's, <laughs> true, like, that's true. Yeah, so that's why I I, I stopped um, after this, you know, and I redid. Yeah. The, if so, you go into the sheet, you'll see I redid it. But yeah, mm -hmm. something else I want to talk about with this book in particular because I think there's we have this kind of torn experience about who liked it and who didn't like it, and I yeah. don't know if I have decided yet whether or not I like this book. So something that really drove me in terms of recognizing how much I like a manuscript and how much I, I don't give a crap about a manuscript is that I know that I finished this book because I wanted to finish this book for book club. I also had a full manuscript to read from ALA that I read like just over a quarter way through or like maybe almost a third through before I stopped um, on Friday night so that I could read this book on Saturday morning, right? And the whole time I'm reading this book on Saturday, I was like, I wanna go back to that manuscript <laughs> that I was reading, unpublished piece of work. Um, yeah. And I think that was, but that was the moment that I realized that, I, that, that this was just a real serious difference in I think pacing and style. And I do want to point out that in Ray Bearer, we experienced a very similar beginning in Ray Bearer where we were told this stuff it about her childhood. We were just up told, as it went along though. Right? But that's the thing. Like in Ray Bearer, I mm. think I don't I think structurally how we got this like telling and then this experiencing was the same. But in Ray Bearer was much shorter. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. I think in this book she took her time to expand on and to tell the story as for, as as much as it needed telling. Because there, there's like a whole sort of stuff there that I'm not even sure stylistically I would have made the decision to keep as the writer, right? Mm -hmm. Like, like mm -hmm. why do I really need to, to, to learn all of this crap about you and Emwita and how long it took for you guys to like kiss for the first time and how it long it took for to start? Maybe. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I needed to know how long like it took. Like, there were, there were, there were aspects of it. Yeah. 
right? I, I, like everything I didn't like about this book was technical. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it, but also it was, like clearly worked. I mean, Donald Mas got this shit published. <laughs> like, <laughs> was it just because it was Donald Mas, or was it because people saw something in this book? Right. I mean, I definitely think we would have, uh, like you said, have a different reception of the book had it ten been established. Ago. As ten years ago, but also had it been established at the front, the uh, the setup or the premise that the story is being told from. If we understood that this is the circumstance under which the story is being told, then it better frames your mind to accept that this is how the story is going to be told. Versus going into a thing thinking you're receiving one thing and expecting the narrative to unfold in one way, and then at the end being blindsided when it's different. I'm not blindsided in a good surprise kind of way, but in a, this would have been better to know at the front so then I could have appreciated some of the nuance of how the story is being told from the beginning. Mm. Yeah, if I was okay. editing this, if I was editing, the, like if this was a movie and I was editing it, I think I would have put the scene of her in the jail cell at the beginning exactly. and mm. then flashback. But for me, it's like it started with the death of her father. Then it went back. Then it came back to the death of her father. Then it went forward. So this, it's like... I. It was a lot of literary whiplash. And if I think, like you said, if we were more well prepared, but it was just a lot of like, what's happening? I'm kind of confused. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. Meanwhile, my disjointed brain understood it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ADHD enough. This is this happened when you were 16, but then this happened when you were, and like I could literally see my brain marking out the timeline. Oh no, I'm like, we're here again. Wait, no, we're back to here. No, now we're, oh, we're and back. Like, yeah, no. I, you yeah, know, exactly. that comment about ADHD really hits close to home because right now I'm testing out medication for that. And like the one day that I didn't take my medication was yesterday when I read this book. <laughs> So what? So basically, y'all didn't like the book so, because audio, so, audio, audio didn't take medication. I mean, no, no, no. I, first, of all, first of all, I didn't actually say I didn't like this book. No, no, no. I'm pulling a leg. I'm pulling a leg. I decided. So right. So Brendan says that it, he wants to know: Is this a case of a good story in the wrong format? Like sometimes he watches or reads something and think this is good, but it would easy. It would be easier to engage with if it was something else. Um, I don't I think know. so. I, no, I, I, I think know. so. Yeah, because I can see it making a really powerful. I can see it being a really powerful movie, right? But you're going yeah, to have to start with out like the Hotel Rwanda. I think. Yeah, you have but cut. you will have to sort out the timeline. You have to. This will be a mini series. This is not a book. This is yeah, not a movie. I this is yeah. not a movie. Yeah. This, is, yeah. this would be a great this mini series. Is like, like HBO I mean, like, what, like, Showtime. Six, I, I, like what I Netflix has been doing with books, instead of turning them into movies, they're turning them into limited run series. Yeah. Right. Which I I'm I'm loving. I I feel like you know. I I think that that would have done well because that disjointedness would not work visually. You know. Yeah. I think I think that the you see I'm not sure that I agreed was disjointed. I, 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 was, I, it was it was really disjointed. Why, I see why you describe it as disjointed. Like the description of disjointed makes sense, but I don't know that I experienced it as disjointed um, because I felt like as I read, I started to recognize how, like, again, I would not start, I would not have made the choice to keep. Oh, you are kitty, Zydel. Mine just ran out. Yeah, Kim, Bibi, Bibi like yelled at the door for like five minutes until I let him in. And then he came inside. And he was like, oh, you're busy. He left. Um, no, he's like, I, I, you're busy. I want attention now. But that was <laughs> before Brendan. Like before we started the live, my husband had to come in and like pick up all of the cats because they were all like mauling. <laughs> um, oh. Brendan also mentioned that because this particular thing where he, he talks about um, something being better in a different format. He said that he thinks for sure Black Leopard would immediately be better if it were um, a series. <laughs> Apparently, my husband is outside and he tossed that toy for the cat, which is why the cat left. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> book, irrelevant book. okay, okay, okay. So what I was saying is, I'm not sure that I agree that it felt disjointed. And perhaps part of that is that this is how I naturally tell stories. Like if I'm just sitting down here talking to Olya, like that is what I would do. I would be like, oh yeah, so and so happened. Wait, but you don't know why that's important. Hold on. All of this is why this one thing mm-hmm. important. 
right? That's so, why this is important. And now let's move on with the rest of the story. And like that's how I think. Now it's not how I write when I'm actually putting this together in a book because I know that other people cannot consume material in that way. And so I make the effort not to do that. But I, but my mom loves to point out to me that I tell stories in a circular fashion like this. <laughs> so I'm not willing to test this theory, but I wonder if because I listened to it and had I read it, I, if I would have been more engaged. Because me. like I said, I was, yeah, I was listening same. to this on audio, so I could do other things. But then I'd be like, oh, they're in a cave now. Oh, now they're in the eye of a storm. And it's just like, I just felt like I kept getting thrown into different yeah. you know, places. And I, I, I wonder if I was sitting down literally engaged, I would see the connection between a cave and this and that. You know what I mean? So I wonder right. if part of it is just because I see, listen to it. But because I'm not really I can't it. do audiobooks yeah. at all. Like at all, I cannot do audiobooks at all. Same, because I read way, I read way faster than I can listen. I read yep. way faster than a person can speak. Yep. Right. Um, and like audiobooks for me are very difficult. I am aware that there are people who can only consume. You know, I'm not gonna gatekeep reading, and you know, oh, it's not real reading. I'm not gonna gatekeep that. It's just that I personally cannot. Consume oh, uh, audiobooks. Well, I mean, so this is my first ever audiobook, which I mean, I guess is a shame because now I'm probably never going to do an audiobook again. Don't, um, don't, don't judge the space, audiobooks. The space, after, the space between worlds, the space between worlds yeah. did a good job. So. Okay. That was a good one. That yeah. was a good but, one. But I did not have that issue though. I didn't have that issue of thinking, oh, where are we now? Where are we now? I I made a I made a very real and concerted effort not to be distracted with my mind wandering off on other thoughts. I was like, no, you're listening to the book. So actually listen to the book and be engaged and like do mundane things that won't distract your mind. Yeah, and so I, mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't have too hard of a time um, following kind of like the, I guess, loopiness of the story. Yeah, um, mm-hmm. But but I did find that there were some things that just felt unnecessary and felt like I didn't need to know that for this to, for any- And yeah, that's, exactly, that. that's exactly yeah. what I mean. Like, I don't know like how much why is this whole struggle getting Arrow to teach you? Why does this matter? Yeah. Because because you know what? Arrow takes up like a few pages. If you just took the entire part about Arrow out, nobody, we wouldn't nothing miss would, that. Nothing would change. He's only in the first change. part. He's only, He's in, the only in the first part. part. Like yeah. we get maybe a little bit later where like the only thing that I could possibly think of that eventually made this maybe vaguely important ish is where she was like, Oh, well, why isn't Arrow here? Arrow is like my father. Arrow is like my, you know, because he's my master or whatever. I'm his apprentice. Yes. And like Arrow's not here. <laughs> and everybody's like, Bitch, shut up. Arrow can't be here because, you know, his magic is not that you, that he can you travel. Don't even like where you can't. That much because she was and a woman. <laughs> Yeah, well, but that's the, and that's the other thing is that I wonder if maybe the purpose that Aaron and those others served is was really about just continuing to to reinforce the idea of this sexist, um, like the sexist world, this like hardcore asshole patriarchy, right? Because that is the only thing that I could think of. Like, I I don't. We could just take all of this stuff about who just begging Aaron to teach her. We could just boop, take that out. One scene. One I don't. Scene. It wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter, right? And I don't think that we would have suffered loss of understanding this patriarchal like BS if she had taken that out. I feel like I would have understood it just as well because mm-hmm. everybody else was also a, a sexist asshole. Like, and Daim was the most sexist fool of them all, and he was the one that really mattered. And that people supported this idea and all of that, and the and the fact that the prophet in the first place, um, in the Changed first place, the gender turned out the, to be it, her. Yeah, not just the yeah. gender, but what? also the it wasn't just yeah. gender, but also the race. Because I was reading, right. yeah. yeah, and um, the, remember the whole connection with regards to children's heritage are passed patrilineally from the Nuru, um, and therefore in order to erase the um. Oh my god, I can't believe I just forgot the word. What is wrong with me? The Having Okiki. Or the Nuru. The Okiki. Right? In order to, to, to erase your Okiki, what you do is you rape an, you know, an Okiki woman. And therefore, her children become Nuru. And well, you well, reduce. Her, you know, and, her children and was, don't become Nuru. Her children become Iwu. Right? Iwu. And Iwu. the Iwu are considered 
demons. Neither, they considered exactly. neither they considered no, that, nor but OCD. but I'm talking but I'm talking specifically about the philosophy behind it. Because then, or because then nobody, because right. then nobody will touch. Because you would have erased. Again. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes, yes, no, yes, but yes, I'm okay. I'm reading. Uh, no, but that, that's what they said. That that is that the 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 heritage is passed to the father. Mm -hmm. Right. And actually, that is fr also from the article that inspired the book. Right. Because it wasn't it was it was it wasn't about the, the, the article that inspired it wasn't about um, trigger warning, female gender mutilation. It was about um, weaponized rape, specifically to erase these people, because the people that were um, doing it, perpetrating it again, their culture states that. You know, this is how your heritage flows. And yeah. that is what, and that is how Daim decided, that is what made him decide, well, okay, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this, you know, systemic. I'm going to make this. There were, so, I had so many feelings too about how some of those serious subjects were managed or handled, right? So, mm. like, let's start with, again, trigger warning, content warning, female genital mutilation, female circumcision. Mm. Okay. There's, um, there were there are a lot of things here that I I felt were uh, interesting. Not well, maybe interesting is not the word, but I, I I I felt some type of way about right. So the first mm -hmm. one, of course, is that um, it's already understood that female circumcision is not a necessity, is not an it's not mm. like a thing, but it is but it is a tradition in that particular village, right, right. and it was a choice but but the tradition meant so much to the people they didn't have a choice. That, it's not really a choice it didn't feel like yeah, a real choice, really right? like a choice. Yeah, because choice. to not engage with the tradition to not engage with the ritual was to bring shame on your family yeah right right so there's that one thing which um oh god one second i swear i charged this thing like before we started right i don't know what happens every time um, anyway, so there's there's that, but here's the thing that 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 gets me is that after we deal with this whole idea of a cho a choice that isn't really a choice, and um, with the idea that people you know don't believe in in this ritual and um, and Onya decides to do it anyway because she's already feeling all of this other shame and all of this other you know mm. pressure and all of this, despite the fact that her parents do not want her to do this right she goes mm -hmm. and she does it anyway even after all of that it's 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 ultimately just a thing that doesn't matter she grows back her whole clitoris and she grows back everybody else's from her group okay right? did she grow it back or did she just remove the juju no, no she, she grew it back she grew it back, no, she, grew it back. No, she, yeah, no, she, she grew it back I knew yeah. she grew hers back, but I didn't know if she just removed the she juju. She had to from remove the juju first, but she, no. she used magic to grow it back. She grew oh, theirs back oh, too. Wow. Everybody she grew theirs back. Yeah. She I knew they, she I knew grew back everybody own. So I knew is... they were enjoying the sex. And so I was like, oh, maybe they just because they removed the juju, but she also grew it back. Okay. It also grew it, ah. it, it, It's explained that she ah. grows it back when um because she uses her hand, right? So she like she like push your hand on the pop pom and just like do the magic. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, you have a clip. You have a clip. Everybody have a clip. You have a clip. <laughs> um, wow. That part it's, was. That was. But what, what, what I'm getting at is it, it becomes clear that it was grown back as opposed to simply the juju was removed because she's shedding the skin from her hand. Um, oh, I remember because she said And Amwita, yeah, Amwita says that basically, you know, you use this hand to grow, um, to pass through time and to grow back skin and nerve and et cetera. So the same thing is happening to your hand. So you need to stop that from happening to your hand because that's what you did to these to these women. Um, and now I, I have feelings about the fact that I even have feelings about this, right? Because... <laughs> Because, no, because, like, these girls go through this horrible, horrific experience that ultimately they all get back. Now, it, it serves, it's not that it serves zero purposes in the book, right? Like, it does help create some tension between her and the others. It does serve to illustrate, like, the extent to which she would go through um, 
pain and suffering and all sorts of other things just to like to like feel like she belongs or be part of something and to to feel like she's not bringing through the shame on her family and things like that and i mean it does serve all of these purposes but like do we did we really need to deal with that particular horrific thing if we're just going to click the undo button like 100 pages later i say yes still yes i, I understand Funny. i understand i understand what you mean but i still say yes i think yeah. um I think the book would have missed something if, they, if we didn't explore it. I think it speaks to a larger, one, it opens space for a conversation about female circumcision, which still happens today, which is exactly. like very mm -hmm. important, exactly. right? Exactly. It brings but it like, to but the light. That was one, that's one of the reasons I have this feeling because it still happens today and women today don't get to hit the undo button. That's true. That's but no, this, is, this, like is, this is a world, that's but the thing is, this is a world where magic exists, where exactly. magic is normalized, right? So, but so here's the question, are and we saying was, then, that women who choose to undergo because sometimes you do get sometimes it's a choice that's not a choice but it's a choice even if it's not right. a choice mm -hmm. you know what i mean so women who experience and undergo female circumcision in real life don't ever get to hit the undo button is does that mean that what we're reading here implies that they would if they could not necessarily but if I, they wanted to, they you, could. But you see what I mean? This is what I'm getting yeah. at. Like, what is that? What is that trying to say? To in me, like a larger to, context? to me, okay. So, in so them going to get it was them all accepting of their place in society, or them wanting right. to okay, secure yeah. their want place to, in society. I, I want to agree and disagree with that point real quick because they weren't aware of what was happening. They all went into Until this the thing end. unknowing of what was going to of happen what to them, what, right. what it actually meant in a larger context, what was actually happening to them physically, exactly. and what it took from them later on. So while, so you can't- And none of them knew about the juju that made them feel pain either, right? Exactly. No, well, that was the, that was the thing. This is, this is how I saw it. I saw it um, symbolic. Mm -hmm. Even though it was physical for them, it was symbolic because they, they I'm going to use air quotes, they knew what they were getting into. They knew what they were getting into based on, based on what you were told, tradition. right? This is what we do. Tradition, based on what mm -hmm. tradition tells you. They right. weren't told anything about the juju, mm -hmm. right? Which would deliberately harm them if they had sex prior to marriage, mm -hmm. right? Um... And then there just, was this moment to where if how we are, bad that is though, it's not that it would hurt them if they had sex after marriage. It is that the, it would hurt them whenever they were aroused. Right. Yes. Until they were married. Shame, putting shame on feelings. Yes. So shame right. on pleasure. And therefore, exactly. putting, yeah. and therefore putting the responsibility on women the to get, keep sex. Right? Once again. I mean, Once not again. that okay. happens in real yeah. life, right? It's, oh, what yeah, were you no, wearing? Totally. But, what, but what were you wearing when you were around them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's even, me, even so, though you know, there's like this whole like uh, um, conflict right now between people that have watched that show Bridgerton on Netflix that's like so popular right now, and how you know the mother is completely ill prepared her children about you know what right? what, what marital duties is. are, or what anything is when it comes to mm -hmm. sex, and it's like like and I and I sat and I watched that show and I was just like, how 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 can you be this this incompetent? Um, it was almost the same in here. It's the same yeah, and that's that's exactly like the lines I was drawing between you know that show and this book, and it's like that's a really poor thing to compare. But like, it's like why why do we we, but but we have so examples of thing, this right? in different areas of our culture, and it's like mm. so let's say so let's go with that. We we make the choice to keep that if we were editing or writing or whatever this book, we right. keep that thing. Tell me if that's not more than enough of an example of the absolute patriarchal BS. That we didn't give a we didn't need arrow etc. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree with that. You know, I agree like, with that. The, the thing is, like, I mean, I the thing is, like, it, it felt like it was a lot, but the reality is, if you go and you are living and you're existing, and you're in that village, you would be experiencing not just, you know, the circumcision, but you would also be experiencing arrow, who is preventing you from learning, and. The thing is, if could you have imagined if she had been more prepared if Arrow had taken her as a student from the get-go? Well, but even, 
even I, I I agree with the point of Arrow not being relevant in the larger story, um, but I don't think it should be written out entirely. So like we could have had him say no once and then say yes, like and that would have been enough for me at least to satisfy right. that there are structures that are uh, hindering and please, her. Yes. yes, that are hindering her progress. Her, her development, and then, yeah. And then we get and then we get her development. But this kind of back and forth that we had of like chapter on chapter on chapter, and I'm just like. I and I think that is one of the drawbacks yes. of character-driven no. writing because stuff like that happens. You do have to do that, but it becomes tedious in writing. Mm -hmm. it be I'm not writing. It, it becomes tedious out. in reading. It could come out. It's yeah. not necessary. But here's, the, here's, my other, like, here's my other gripe about that too, right? Is that I'm willing to bet that, you know, maybe not. Let's not bet anything because I poor. Um, let me not bet anything. <laughs> But I, I could just imagine like all of those little throwaway lines later on where she's like, but where's Arrow, right? Like they're just like, the sun, this is not Arrow magic. He can't come and just vibes with you whenever he wants. This is why Arrow is not here. That's because mm. somebody read it and, and asked that question. Somebody read it and asked that question because mm -hmm. Arrow wasn't there once he was no longer relevant, right? And that is, again, I do think that that's something that was more acceptable 10 years ago, you know, right. that it, it needed that line still. But it was something that we were willing to accept yeah. 10 years ago. And we said, we're not willing to accept that now because now you have a character like that and people will mm. tell you to change it. People will yeah. straight up just tell you, you can't like, look, look, fix, fix this. Why is this character yeah, here? Yeah, why is this relevant? And then yeah. not present. Like, find another because, way to show what you're trying to show with this because character. Because all of that took right. place early in the book when she was still telling, right? And even if you're still telling, you can still have that moment where they say, um, like, I've been begging you for years and so on. And, and I'm like so desperate. The, the same thing like, could have been established with the passage of time. What's that? Could, the same thing could have been established with the with a passage of time. Uh, yeah. Right. Only, instead of this kind of continuous back and forth. We could have just been like, oh, yeah, okay, five years have passed. Now she asks, cool, cool, cool. I agree. So like you're saying, going the back and the forth, back and the forth, as a reader, you start to get tired. You're like, I walked here and I right. walked here and I walked there. And it's like stylistically, like and again, we're talking about a 10 year old book, but stylistically mm. there are ways like you, you just, what's your name? I'm so sorry. Side out. Side out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> as you said, Sai, that, you know, like a passage of time or a different way of, of working those scenes, even like, like I said, just recutting the book, I think, um, could have made the pace a little bit better but as a reader i just felt exhausted and it was it was some books it's hard for me to, to zone out i'm like very in this book it was very easy for me to like wander and think about something else yeah so. okay i want to say to your point of um of asking what are we trying to say in the larger narrative as part of the circumcision conversation about if all women had the option to magically turn it around if they would i don't know so does everyone in the story i haven't gotten there yet obviously get their um clip back yes well, so everybody and in her circle, so her herself, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, so Luyu, Binta, DT. So Binta, Binta yeah. Luyu, and DT all, all get it, and then she, but she gets hers first because she grew it back herself, right? Yes, exactly. Right. Right. I, right. I think it would have been a more interesting, uh, maybe dynamic if someone in that grouping decided not to opt for theirs back and maybe just have the pain removed. You know what I mean? Then that's yeah. a different kind of conversation about ch actual true choice and what sometimes your volition to make a tough decision. Right. Why it's so attached to tradition and why you want to be a part of that tradition. That yeah. might have been a bit m more valuable um yeah for, for a reader i think i think well, so she had just I'm learned how it. to heal i think she, i think in this story if i remember correctly i may not be but if i remember correctly she had just learned to heal no. and so for her to remove she didn't just learn to heal no so in this story she had known how to heal from before and what she was trying, um, and DT specifically, because DT is the one who was there with her fiance, fan is Fanasi, right? Mm -hmm. DT right. And, and oh, you you just tilted sideways, um, Talia. I don't know what happened there. Oh. Anyway, anyway so DT <laughs> um, was really part. So so that um, the fact that she and Emwita were basically bullying on the place every night, um, <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> Bri is like, true, hey, you're lying. There's, a, there's a lot of true, in this book. A lot. A lot. Yeah, a lot. Good for so, them. Yeah. Like, I was listening. I, mean, I was I was listening to this book like while on a plane. So like I so like I, I had to sit and listen to it. 
because I, I couldn't move. I couldn't oh my go gosh, anywhere for, for a audio, few hours. For my audiobook ladies, the part where she has yeah. her first orgasm, how awkward is that? Listen right? I was like, uh, this is... I was getting I was like I was I was like I'm so mad right now because like they don't they they don't allow alcohol like service right now on the planes and I was like I I need need it I need a drink like right now this is so bad that was the most awkward moment though it's like she finally even the tonal shift of it was very strange like it felt like she stopped recording and then started back because you're important it was like it was just nuts it was not sex. Talia, mute, mute yourself with whatever going on back there yeah. now, because I don't, I just hear that's such a feedback, and yeah. I think Miguel, and yeah. like. See, but that's, that's okay, kind of why. Okay, now? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right oh, side yeah. up again, but that happened but very what quickly. what about the feedback? No, I don't hear any feedback anymore. That's yeah, Miguel good. came into the room, so I think I got feedback from him. Okay, no worries. Yeah. Um, we, were, we, were just, we were just kiki key and over the very bad orgasm in the audiobook. Um, anyway, <sighs> the fact so that somebody who does buy-in. somebody who does um, audiobooks, you all need to get my contact so that you all can let me hear these things because. <sighs> anyway, so it was bad. Yeah, um, it was so bad. My point is, what I was getting at is that the the rift happened because she had grown back her own. And in and who who mm. the one that was on who circumcision, um, I think it it was broken when she passed initiation, mm-hmm. and so yeah. she was able to grow hers back where she didn't have to feel pain and such anymore, um, and then she just didn't do it for anybody else because she didn't know how, but she knew how to heal, she knew how to heal. But she didn't know how to break the juju. And I don't think that at any point she connected the ideas. And I also think that it didn't occur to her at all that she should. Like, I don't think, I yeah. think that's the thing. Like, she didn't stop and think to herself, oh, yeah, yeah I should give back my, I should give back my friend and then they, they you know, the, the, the little, the little, you know, like, <laughs> I had to think about that. So I think what happens is that it's not until DT confronts her and she's like, bitch, you burn down the place. And all of you just had a just had a whole wee nanny and suffer. What is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what happened. Um, Kiawat, right? Uh, Kiawat. Kiawat, so what we going to do, right? We're just going to let Kay read scene by scene and then give us her reimaginings <laughs> of it. And that's the audio we deserve. Um, my friends back in college, I don't know if she remembers this. Do you remember when uh. I did that for Twilight? Oh. oh my god. It was fantastic. And I really wish at that time we had better like recordings because nobody thought to record yeah. it. Everybody was busy laughing. We were we were so busy just dying. It was horrible yeah. and wonderful all at the same time. Like kind of like this is right now. So, yeah. Yeah. so she was just like, what was I saying? Right? How they had a whole long day, Annie. So then <laughs> it's only in that confrontation that that Oni is like, well shit, I don't know how. I don't know how to break the juju and it doesn't even occur to her to heal the whole and like grow back the whole clitoris. Eh? It's just about breaking the juju and she's like, well, I don't know how to do that. Right? I kind of like that in terms of any sense what that... She, what, what happens next though is that immediately after that, she heals a woman with scoliosis, like very bad scoliosis. And the woman decides she doesn't want to be healed. Yes. But at the end of the process... But at the end of the process, she realizes how to fix it. And so mm. after that, she she tells them um, and does it. And I go like to tell you, I thought DT was right. How are you going out of the only place? And you know your friend and them just had to be like, oh, God, I'm listening, but I can't. And you all know? of, listen, and, they, and uh. they're horny like hell, eh? They're horny like hell, and they want the coitus, and they're hearing it. Man, they're smelling it. They have access to it, and they can't get it. Can't get it. That was just that was that was cruel. That was real cruel. Although I will real jump cruel. in, I will jump in to back up just a second because I, I forgot who mentioned it. Maybe it was Side Out who said that it would have been better to illustrate choice if they somebody chose not chose to. Not do to. It. Yeah. There was one scene that isn't the same but kind of the same where she realized that she didn't just she grew her clip back and then she ungrew well, she it, took and it, then grew it right i just remember that when k was talking yeah. i was like that's actually probably what they were so trying to of, do yeah 
but it wasn't explored enough in my opinion where she's like oh wait, why did I remember that yeah, yeah, it, but, no, but you know why that. nobody remembers that because it's a throwaway line in the book yeah it's yeah. a throwaway it's a one line where she says that Aru implied that what happened was she grew it back she had cut, got cut off then she grew it back and then it got cut off again and that's it that's a th it's like one line yeah she asked herself yeah. very briefly like why did i do that and it's like yeah. the tradition and whatnot so yeah, yeah you're right like, it was very it's like one line very, like that's very short. short yeah i'm sorry yeah. that doesn't fucking count well you know what i intended i agree just, though i think that just goes to illustrate because for me the payoffs just didn't feel Hey, like earned enough earned or whatever it was very like very quiet symbol symbol things where you know in some right. books you get a big symbol crash the payoffs here were just like oh they got their clits back now they can bone cool like i'm happy Wait. for them really but it didn't feel like, like i was saying i was saying it Especially, earlier like it, it it felt like it felt very like heavy-handed symbolism you know what i mean like mm -hmm. look at us we're making a choice we're going against what we've been taught Right, we are throwing off our shackles, so to speak, and like I, I kind of because I don't even get the impression. I don't get the impression that was it at all. To me, the impression was a wobble. <laughs> I mean, that even they did. even they even that's what the juju was stopping them from doing. It was stopping them from wanting. You know, it's supposed to stop them from wanting to bull, right? It's like. He, even, so Miguel, even and there, own, there's a joke that's been going around. Sorry, there's a joke that's keep, been going we keep, around. We keep interrupting. We keep interrupting Sidel. No, 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 Sai has been back in a no, while. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go for it, Sidel. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 um, there's there's a joke that's been going around where a parent, some parents find, you know, BDSM gear under their 13-year-old son's um, gear and magazines underneath his bed. And they're like, okay, we need to correct him. What do we do? And the husband says, well, we sure as heck not going to spank him, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they want to. Well. It's supposed to make them not want to, but they want to because it's part of their human condition, right? And, like, if I were to compare the two books, Space Between Worlds and, and, and this one, Space Between Worlds was like a th you know, th thousand shred sheets and this book was it, it, it's a beautiful basket you know what i mean it, it, it's, I it's not it's not as things. tightly woven right mm, i see mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. and, and it's like okay i'm letting you be i'm letting you be you as a writer and reading yeah, it from yeah, that yeah. perspective and, and, and i completely agree that that is what we should do i just again as both a writer and a reader i had mm -hmm. just feelings around why why like what was yeah there's a lot of stylistic choices i would not have made mm -hmm. right and i think that this book could have benefited from better editing cutting better well, like yeah i don't even know if that's true like we have this whole we have especially when you look at like the self-publishing world right because right. there are so many books out there. No, this was not self-published. Let's be clear. Yeah, this was not. This was published by, if I'm not mistaken, a big five publisher. This was a Doe. Yeah. Right? Um, uh, the agent is like a very well-known, very um, like big name kind of agent as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the thoughts are wrote for Black Panther. Yes. Uh, I, think, I think so. Um, Pat yeah. Rothfuss also, who is like one of the... Um, like big daddy white men in, in writing like he wrote name of the wind and and um the king i think it's called the king killer chronicles or something like that mm -hmm. anyway like people had their a lot of those people had their fingers in this book right like if you read the acknowledgments there are some very big names there in publishing yeah. um and that to me makes it incredibly ironic that somebody would say something like it could have benefited from better editing um and I don't think that I necessarily disagree with you, but I do feel like it got a lot of editing in a different era for fantasy, mm. in a different era for what people mm -hmm. liked and what people looked for. I feel like perhaps for all we know, the reason all the clitoris has got grown back is because people were like, no, you have to, you had to get up. You had, no, you had to get each turn back to thing. No, 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 no. That's, that, that, is not a happy, that is not a happy ending. But the thing is, um, even even in the growing back, you need a literal happy to, ending, um, right? To, to your point, even. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm just gonna get a pillow for my back. Excuse me. <laughs> we Sorry. Stop. That, okay. was, that, was, that was good. <laughs> Thank you. Even in good me. night. Good night. <laughs> You've been a great crowd. <laughs> Even in the growing back to your point, uh, I just I don't think the payoff was enough. So when when she grew hers back uh, accidentally, it was kind of by the way, it was another one of those kind of throwaway things that happened for like a paragraph, and then we were on to the next thing. And I'm like, this was such a pivotal moment in the beginning of the story when she experienced the father for the first time, like. How is that moment where all of this kind of sexual stigma is removed in a society that is so oppressed? How is that such a throwaway thing? How are we not putting more emphasis on that? Maybe because there mm. were a lot of male editors. Mm. I also yeah. think it's because I, yeah. I also think that it was because um, it was an uncomfortable topic. And but so if you're going they, to she might have. Nah, it was like, no, exactly. If you're going to exactly. cut off my clit in the it beginning of the book, like, then give me more just dues in the end when you give me back my clit. I, I just think I that right. maybe she maybe she might have written about it and it might have had more discussion around it. And again, and, we have a we, lot of male like editors who would have yeah, said, yeah, ah, this is unnecessary. Sense. Just yeah. like... We, I, I feel like I would, I would, I would really like if I could get like an early copy of a manuscript for this book before mm. it was edited, and and definitely not read to me. <laughs> I feel like I would. I, I would, have a sexual one with a terrible accent. <laughs> listen, so listen. Speaking. You oh. know how angry, how angry that audiobook is making me right now. It's it's. <laughs> It's bad. Oh, it's it's bad. Go listen it's to the sample. Good. Go to listen to the sample. Oh, later. Don't do that. Nope. Don't do that. <laughs> nope. Nope. Don't do that. Nope. Don't even do that. I choose life. <laughs> take our word. You can take our word. I'm take too pretty. I'm too pretty. <laughs> yeah. No. Because I, I feel like I feel like just just to kind of finish my point here. I feel like I feel like. I am conflating my anger with the whitewashing from the audiobook to the actual text that is written. Okay. That's mm. what I that's how I feel. And I feel like if I were to give this book a real chance, um, I really would feel like, you know, it would benefit from me being able to read something without someone else's voice or clearly other people's opinions and voices included into this. I feel like it would. I would give this a lot better justice if, if I could hear directly from the author the way that she had written and intended it. Intended it to be read. Yeah. And read, yeah. 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 Or even just That's giving myself the, the the option to try and and put my own thoughts and opinions into it instead of could you, you imagine know, just Kay's vision of this angry. Book? Oh, I would. I would not read it and like be bowling for people <laughs> nanny and them. You know, I don't know what's wrong with you. No. Just I think it's <laughs> no. No. Like, oh, okay one, right? First thing first, she fought a dead, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, I, I'm not I have being attacked. <laughs> You're not being attacked. You've been appreciated. That's and it. I think. Go ahead. Oh no! I you finish. You finish. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. I was just... Oh, I was just going to... Because, you, you know, a little bit before we were talking about, like, you know, she grew it back. And then I was going to say, I don't even think it was her idea. I think she was in the middle of sex. And then he's like, yeah, you can fix it. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're so right. It wasn't even oh, her, right. her idea. You are like, so oh, right. Her idea. Like, no big deal, okay. girl. You can fix it. So once again, her pleasure is in the hands of somebody else. Good so time. Mm, yeah. Nice. She, like, I wonder... Like she could throw it back. Her man was like, well, if you want to come. Fixing yourself. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Bring you're it. right. <laughs> See, and and maybe that's something why like I struggled with this book so much is because I come from a matrilineal society where, you know, like, you know, it's it's female empowerment from the time you're a baby, right? And I just I had so many issues with men being able to like take control of women like this, because that's that's not how I was raised. Like it's completely the opposite. And so for me, it was really hard to sit here and have to listen to like men telling her constantly how she should feel if, if she's worthy mm -hmm. or she's not and that and i'm like yeah no 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 i'm fair, not you. though not me not for to me. be fair though that's the point right yeah. like that's the point when you are living in a world like that where you don't have control over your own body you don't have yeah. control over and thank you miguel <laughs> miguel says <laughs> I would buy K audiobook. <laughs> I would I thank you. To be to be fair, I would buy anything that you would read. For sure. 
yeah. Maybe not this one, read, but like Just anything. to be clear, do you read anything that I would read the way that I paraphrased that? Yes. <laughs> yes. If, you read, read. if you read if you read a phone book, I would buy it. Aw. <laughs> I love you too. Oh, that is because really I love you. But I wonder how much more powerful that moment would have been, and if it, if it was her idea, yeah. her choice, and and not him just saying, "Oh, girl, just do do your thing," you know? No, I think it yeah. would have been more powerful, a, a louder payoff. Exactly. That, like, I would have appreciated if exactly. Was, yeah. If she yeah. had taken control of her own body in that moment and said, "This is what I want," but you know, I feel like we didn't get that from her loudly. But I don't. I don't know. Some people. Which pass out there of is a character criticism. for me? I'm not I sure mean, that I felt like it felt altogether. I but mean, I guess people, we get it in her physicalization of transformation. We get it in that sense of where she's really leaning into those strengths and her ability in that way. Right. She really kind of takes ownership of some of that and really leans into I can do this and I have power here and I have control here and I will exercise that as best as I can. Yeah. And I think yeah. um, there is a there is a criticism that 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 passes every now and then that I hear of where people are like, why do why do all of these moments have to be loud and why do they have to be big and why can't they just be like you know these these quiet instances of demonstrating your own autonomy? Because me, maybe, maybe it was his idea, but I mean she had to do it herself. She made the choice to do it. She was like, oh, oh yeah, this is a thing I could do. Thing, right? Yeah. Like sometimes that's sometimes just how it yeah. goes. Um, I mean, are I we supposed to take it as like lot. as his think, support of her doing that? I don't know. Maybe I, I mean, know. I I definitely felt like it, it was his support versus like, yeah, you can, you yeah, go ahead, whatever. Like, <laughs> it, it didn't feel growing. It didn't feel like no, a growing yeah. man. It felt like support. Uh, but I think yeah. because of how it was set up in the beginning, of how yes. much importance was placed around specifically her and her experience yeah. losing her clitoris, then the payoff should have needed to be different for it to be feel impactful. Yeah. You know what it was? It's because yeah. it was so quick. It wasn't like a thing where she was thinking about it and, and thinking, how, can I do this? It was just, oh, we're in the middle of sex. Wow, this, this feels kind of bad. I need to make it feel good. Yeah. And so it's like, it just happened like that's that. Why, that's why I said it felt out of character because she is this hot-headed girl. She is intelligent. She wants to fix things. She's going to scorch the earth if she has to. And so it felt yes, like to me, <laughs> literally to the end. But in that moment, it felt like she was trying to be tender. She was trying to be feminine. She was trying to be like what she thought was. I, I didn't like that scene was kind you of. You real plenty out of that. I didn't get girl. I, 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 all I get was, mm. That's that's what she <laughs> like I said because I identify with her so much because I am a hot headed yeah. person, right? It's like this would have you been would. something that I would have tried. I would have tried something because I know that if I was able to unlock that juju and reverse it, I would fucking piss off Arrow. Yeah, but did did Arrow even know? Did Arrow even like have the chance? Arrow was to the recognize? person that invented the the whole. You no, know. no, 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 but no. did he even know that she grew back? She grew back. No, say, no, no, no but the thing is, see. being spiteful is not necessarily about, you know, writing him a letter and tell him, hey, guess what I did, bitch. It's, it's like, like knowing it's, it's like a him that I did that. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to add, though, to that, that I don't think he would have freaking cared because in the beginning when she went to go apprentice with him, he's like, oh, you've been cut. This is problematic. So he would have preferred she was never cut in the first place. Yeah. Also, yeah. like... I don't know what that had to do with anything. There is nothing that I read in that book that suggests to me that she needed to have the ability to climax to pass initiation. That suggests to me she needed to have the ability to climax I didn't, to engage no, in I magic. Didn't, I didn't think it was problematic in that sense. I think it was problematic in the sense of um, that kind, because they talk about this later on, and maybe I just am interpreting it incorrectly, but that kind of physical trauma slash pleasure takes you to access the wilderness it allows you to kind of like open up to that euphoria and that is what was dangerous for her and so the fact that she was cut was like oh that means that you've experienced this i wish you hadn't been cut because then you wouldn't have experienced yeah. this and you could have protected you from your father for a longer period of time not like you being cut means you can't access the world of magic and it's yet. no but it's it's both it's both okay. because yes they, they made it clear that if y'all hear like something really loud fall down, it's probably just a cat. I'm so sorry in advance, right? Um, they're being, they're misbehaving, they're misbehaving a little badly. 
Um, anyway, so there were there were two instances in which that sort of thing was um, what Aww. was mentioned. <laughs> One is where yes, they said very clearly that because she engaged in that act, the pain sent her to the wilderness. Um, and that's where her biological father discovered her and they could have protected her for longer if that hadn't happened. That was said, right? But when she made Sola in the middle of the desert for initiation, oh, I understand. The that's time, okay. mm. it, it, yeah, he's like, oh, you can't climax. And it's like, what the fuck does that have to do with my initiation? With anything. Yeah. I have to die. Oh, Are you saying yeah. that I have to orgasm and die at the same time oh, to pass initiation? Like, yes, I was just about to say that, Brie. I was just about to, to, to say that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sweet girl. She wants me to throw her toy for her. Excuse me, please. Throw Carry her on. toy. So that's important. The internet. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Miguel is handling my cats. Doing well. I'm not hearing them. You're need, hearing need, them more. I need a babysitter for my dog during book club. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. You just let her come on screen. That's so. all. Hey, come here. I love that everyone has animals. It makes me so happy. Come here. I, I, I have children. I have like Talia's, Talia's animals are actually human beings. Don't let her fool you. She refers to them as cats because they behave like cats. Mm. Noted. S specifically, <laughs> there was a conversation with Care oh. and Julie. And they were, hi, Echo. Patak speed. Patak speed. Yeah, yeah, so they were talking about their cats. And I thought, at, f at first I was thinking, okay, well, this is not a conversation I can engage in because I don't have cats. And then they were talking about things like, the, the, like their cats just knocking stuff off of, of shelves and so on. And I'm like, but my children do that. <laughs> or, you know, you're sitting down there and they want to give you space. And I'm like, but my children do that. You have cats, and I realized they just, they that there was, just, there was just way too much overlap so i refer to their you know their 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 um when, so when children and, yeah, cats. yeah, yeah children i refer and, to mine as my human cats yeah exactly no so anyway that's, that's, that's a bit of a tangent but what i was getting at is there was this whole big hullabaloo made around how, how she cannot climax because she's been circumcised and la 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 and it has oh puppy <laughs> Um, but anyway, but it has all to do with her actual use and engagement with magic. In fact, aside from like, don't you don't you think that maybe they, they place all of this weight on her not doing certain things like becoming pregnant or becoming X, Y or Z because it will make her so much more powerful. Right. Uncontrollably or like powerful. Right. So uncontrollably powerful. You'd think that since she went and she do this thing to herself, you want to just leave it so because it might deter her from <laughs> engaging in the things that make her pregnant. No, it's a big problem that she cannot climax now. For what reason? Nobody knows. Because it doesn't actually interfere with her engaging in, in magic or the well, so isn't, isn't that like a larger commentary on everyone trying to police women's body and about what oh, they can sure, and can't do sure. and seek pleasure and how it has no effect on their ability to do anything else in life? Right. It's that's true. That's that's true. Except that they're making out like it does though. Like so that's is not like, what I'm saying. That's the world the world does. The world makes out like I my body and my sexuality and what I choose to do with my body and who I choose to fuck or not has an impact on my ability to move through the world anything, and be powerful yeah. in the world and do anything that's, outside that's of that. Fair. I just thought that was so dumb because like Sola, she she like gets there and, and he's like, You can't climax. Oh no. And I'm like, oh no. Right, this 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 graphic horrific thing wherein i had to put this book down for 20 minutes is going to pay off somehow because this decision she made to fit in is actually going to prevent her from engaging with magic and and completing her task and, and fulfilling her arc nope actually that's not the case so let's just being an idiot thanks yeah really i think the only serv service it proved was that like it just got her to the wilderness for the first time and that she was trying to conform. I think that's all I got from it. And the shock factor because ouch. I mean, as a woman reading that, that was- I had to stop. No, I had to put yeah. the book down and, and I sat, I put the book and down. And walk away. Yeah. I put the book down and I sat with my legs crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go for check 20, like, oh, it's still good. For 20 <laughs> minutes. Just go and check. <laughs> Make sure she's still there. I sat like, with the legs crossed for 20 minutes. And I was just like, I was like, 
That was and hard I had to, to take read. Breath. It, was it was really hard to read. read. It was really hard to read. And and like we've said already on this, you know, this is something real. This is something that happens today. It still happens today. So and I think that it was still a very important thing to tackle in a book that use the kind of culture and themes and like engage with those things the way that it did. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that was really important. But I guess, are you all serious right now? <laughs> Excuse me, please. Pet talks, pet please, talks. Please, please, please. No, they're fighting. I'm not showing all your picture. I'm fighting. <laughs> are you hearing that? Uh, no, I wasn't, I wasn't hearing it. I wasn't hearing it. But as she was saying, it's important. It was an important subject, yeah, especially important 10 years ago, too. especially today. But the payoff, I, what was it? Yeah, was I think I think what got me what got me about it is that, you know, if it's if you want to demonstrate a, a harsh reality that women face today, because this is a real thing, even relevant 10 years later from whence this book was written, right? Or from whence this book was published, rather, because it was written even before then, right? Um, if you want to do that, if you want to engage with that fact, it was very strange to me that it was an easy undo, right? It was just an easy undo that, I mean, it, it certainly did help to create tension between the group, et cetera, but it was an easy undo button that we don't get in real life. Well, because you know- and we, as, and we as women who had to face the moment of mutilation reading this in the book, we don't actually have to face the continued consequence of it throughout the book either and i think that is the thing for me that made me wonder why we had to engage with this in the first place well and from a I, craft, I feel like sorry go ahead Bri. oh i was just gonna say from a craft point of view especially with like the hero's journey for example the character will go through deficit and challenge and setback and then it's the culmination of all those setbacks that awakens something in them for the final push at the end. But in this case, she had the the struggle and then it was just undone. And it's like, okay, now we can go forward. So there wasn't a gradual climb of like upping the stakes, upping the stakes. We figure something out and we go. It was like, okay, we have all these challenges. Oh, no, now we don't have them. So we can just defeat the enemy. Kind of. Right. That's kind of, um, yeah. I think we're going to go back to, to, to what is considered the own voice. And as has been pointed out, there's a lot of people that are not female or people that are not black that were thanked. And these are influential people that assisted her in getting this book out. Um, she does speak about it. And she said that she put it in because culture is alive. I'm reading here. Culture is alive and fluid and is not made of stone but it remains what it is, like a shape-shifting octopus, etc. cetera. And the thing is, she spoke about it and she insisted. And I think that there were things that she had to compromise on in getting her book out. Yeah, and that's, because she that's is what dealing I'm with, at. Right. And like, I, I, I did want to speak about it because I, I thought that this was a very important thing that we need as women of color, that we needed to speak about, that there'll be people that think that we're being too brown or we're being too... Um, East Indian or being too indigenous or we're focusing so much on, on things that are considered wrong. But this is our culture and we're, we're speaking about it and we have to talk about it in a manner that if I'm, in, if I'm going to engage my audience and I'm going to engage them authentically, then I need to present to them this thing authentically. And like as Kay mentioned earlier, it's like, you just touch me and go back. Like you get a clip, you get, you know, and I, it felt and so I felt like that non-voice meddling took place. Exactly. And that's what I was you saying know? earlier when I would not I would not be surprised to learn that that happened because white people right. slash white men read this book and they were like, no, we need to give them a happy ending. Right? Like that's, yeah. you know, they had to, you have to undo yeah. that. You can't let people yeah. read about this and you can't make that a permanent real thing. This is fantasy. You can't let that happen. I feel like I don't know if this is true, and maybe one day I will be privileged enough to talk to this writer and find out. But right. I—that's what it feels like to me because it's like why? Because it's such I, an I, important I, thing I looked, to include. Why sorry, make yeah. it trivial? And I, I'm looking at this book, and this book came out how many? Like ten years. Ten years ago. ago ten years ago. Yeah. Right. And uh, who fears death, Ray Bear? They came out within the past five years. Right maybe even less. 
And the thing Vivera is that came out last year. Last year. Last year, right. But these books came out and 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 these are the books like 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 this. They paved the way, so to speak. They walked so that others could run, basically. And that's why we have things like uh 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 queer baiting in, 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 in older movies and so on, where characters can't be authentically gay because of the is the his convention, here's something, whatever, that. Yes. And it's and so you know you kind of have so so you mention it but you pull back you mention it but you you, you you drop the talk then you know you throw words as we see in Trinidad we throw words for something and like I'm seeing it still in like when I say old I mean like 10 50 literature from 10 15 years ago which is much different from stuff that was written a hundred years ago and so on um uh and so it, it's becoming like writers are getting more and more able to present their stories authentically. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I, I appreciated this because she took something that was like, then it was much harder to discuss. I think if she wrote this book now, she chose to rewrite this book. This would be a completely different book. Yeah, but I mean, also like as a writer, certainly she's a, she's she's undergone a lot of change in the last yeah, 10 years as a writer. Of course. Um, of course. Something else I wanted, as you mentioned, queer beating. You see how um, Binta and Gigi were sharing a tent? They were roommates. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I kept waiting. I kept waiting. Do you know one big question I had throughout this whole time reading about that was, so if you, if you whenever you get aroused by a man, uh yeah, does mm -hmm. is it a loophole? In. Is that a mm -hmm. loophole? Like, can I have fancy pants time with Miguel them and like can I help a sister out? Exactly. <laughs> can I? Can I? Can I? And I really wanted to know. I really wanted to know. And there was so much potential for like a little lesbian relationship there. And it's not that it and it's not that it was something that was completely off off limits for this book because when um when she was healing Scoliosis girl Numu, I think her name was. Yeah. Uh, Numu, Numu, something. So, um, Numu. I, she, you know, when she was drawing on the energies of everybody in the in the area, she was like, there were five couples having sex. One of them was a woman and another woman who both loved and hated each other, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. It's not like that's that's not a thing. It's not like it was completely unacknowledged, right? But I mean, but again, it, it goes back that to that one, single line. We get that, exactly. We get that one line that says, yes, I acknowledge that queer people exist. And then you have the whole, this was like 75% of the book. These two sleep in the same tent. That's and we. And oh, and this was after they went to that city where they found freedom and they were flirting with the other guys and they were horn the heck up and, you know. Yeah, but 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 they were sleeping in the same tent before that, you know. Yes, what I'm saying is that there was the opportunity after that because they would have been exposed to so much more during their time in that bar, for example. That is like they come back and like, are you hear that this that that two women could do this? Like maybe, and then that was a discussion that they could have again the same discussion that you just had, the same thing you just said. They could have had that discussion then because they they were exposed. It's one thing you're not exposed and you don't know. I, I just but said after that exposure. If, if after listening to Mwetan Onia go at it like desert hairs, which is the exact phrase that was used in the book, desert hairs, <laughs> right? <laughs> if her and them go at it like desert hairs was making a girl feel a how, and the girl next day was feeling a how, and all you realized there was, no, was no pain in feeling a how together, well, suddenly there would have been hearing sounds that wasn't Fanasia and Luyu. I just said, I just said. Well, Fanasia and DT at first, because, yeah. No, no, because it's, no, DT, it was DT and Benta, you know. It was DT sleeping with Benta because DT couldn't bear to sleep with Fanasi because of all mm. of the, the nanny pain. Like, that's. The nanny pain. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened. Yeah. I, um. And there was so much to explore about like body ownership and stuff. There. And not not to say that that didn't happen at all in the book. I think that, that she certainly engaged with that thematically well. And I mean, again, remember for the time period that we are talking about, again, 
Yes. This is 10 years ago. This is 10 years ago. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'm not just, I, I mean, not but just like, that. If I were I reading mean, that today, if I were reading that and I, and this book was a recent book, I would have been like, bitch, where is my lesbian sex? <laughs> <laughs> I would She's have been... surreal in after space between. But it's not just that. Remember, the book is written right? in the first person, yeah. right? Book is written in the first person, and what she was busy having do? pulling out a place like Desert Hairs, no, and no, she no, may no, not no, have no, been no, able no, to no, think no, or no, even no, be concerned no, 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 about no, no, what no, other no. people were and weren't no, doing. No, 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 no. Because it don't matter how busy she was pulling like that, like a Desert Hair, she was busy here in Louis and Fanasi Bolong too. Right? Nice. So if you could be busy here and that, you could be busy here and your gal. Right? Cool. Anyway. Sorry. I was More just, of I, a story. Just I was, don't live it at I was 10. Getting... <laughs> don't do it. I got... hear you. Don't do it in a tent? I said, yeah, don't live in I a got... tent because then everybody be here in your business. <laughs> just learn to be silent. I gave birth in silence. No, so you. you can do no. it. Like, no, no, that. Man. no that. thank you. I got I got excited, I will say, because while I was like returning my audiobook before this, I did see like there was a short story called Binti and I I had while you were talking, Care, like I had to go look up and like see I don't think it's her though. It's no, not it's her. Binti. Yeah, it's in space. Yeah. I look I looked it's it up space. too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got excited though and I was like, Oh wait, let me go see. Is this is this the story that Care wants? And dang, dang. Well, first of all, the character was Binta. And for those yeah. of you who didn't finish it, spoilers, Binta dies. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I'm well, sorry. I mean, it could be like it could be like a it could be like a George R. R. Martin thing where like you know you write it like it, beforehand or whatever. Should I, should I say it? Should I say it? Yeah. Should I? Should I? Should no, I? No. I don't no, know what you're going to say. But I don't know what you're going to say. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. It, freedom of oh. speech. Go, Talia. It was <laughs> like George R. R. Martin because everybody fucking dies. <laughs> I feel good oh. about myself. <laughs> oh, that's fine. That's fine. Well, Whatever. here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yes and no. Because for those of us who actually managed to get to the end, we know that before anything can be rewritten, it must be written. So Right. Yes. So that does, I think that ending in the, in the vein Physical. of how Maro Thieves, yeah. in the vein of how Maro Thieves left us with some hope, like a hopeful ending. Yeah. I it think that, that this one, but it's a different kind. It's a very different kind of hope. It's it's a situation where she just kind of pushed through, did what she had to do, got all the way to the end, and she still suffered and she still died. But then once that occurrence happened, essentially, like, that, 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 that had to happen. It had to be written the way it was originally written before the change she created in the book in the first place could come back around and yeah. rewrite what re rewrite everything right um and we don't get to see all of the rewrite but we do get to and that i also thought was a very interesting stylistic choice because we get the end of the chapter a prologue and then the next chapter and then yet another chapter after that so we get two chapters after the epilogue sorry not the prologue the epilogue we get two chapters yeah. after the epilogue again <laughs> Yeah, which I thought was very interesting, but I also like appreciate why it was done the way it was done. I appreciate like how that worked because of the way the book was was telling the story to begin with. Um, okay, we spent a lot of time talking about touching each other, Nani. Uh, we spent a lot of time talking about fun times, fun times, <laughs> fun times. Um, what are some other things? Because I mean, you, we've already wouldn't been be a conversation like, with care without it. I'm that's did anybody, did anybody that's think funny. she was way too intense, blinding the whole damn city? I know they. Nah. Well, look, I know they killed. Binta. You kill my friend, and all I do is blind you. Bet well, you lucky. They, but look, there's people Bet like you lucky. there's probably kids, you know, people who weren't involved. I don't know. I was like a whole damn city. It's my friend. Ten people. <laughs> no, they got off light. Not at they all. got off light. 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 You killed my friend. You killed my best it was, it was friend. Very, it was very biblical. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. Like, I was actually about to say that. It's like, this is a very Peter Pay for Paul situation. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If if everybody else in the world had to pay for Paul, well, you better pay for two. You, 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 you got it. You got it. Okay. <laughs> Your credit is bad by association. Right, I, but I that is what felt... fed. That is what fed into her legend. 
And that is yes, why when she went to other towns, yes. they were able to do what they had to do better no, because those towns, those towns knew about her because she mums went ahead right. of she. That's a whole, yeah. that is a whole other thing that I did not understand. Like they, we don't have time to talk about all of that because we spent so much time on this other stuff. Actually, actually, I'm going to be one. rereading this book. I am definitely going to be rereading this book because but there are some had, things I, that. And there were some things that like came around to the end that like they came out of nowhere, but then she tied it back to like her mother and her mother's past. And I was like, is this contrived or or does is this logical? I can't decide. Yeah, I I, I didn't go back and do that. That uh, there there are a lot of things I want to go back and really and truly sort out, right? Because like I said, there are that's aspects of this book that I really that's liked. That's not something because- to sort out. That's the thing that was said. Like that's the thing that was said. Like the like the Kipo Yongo, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. So the lizard. was yeah, the fire yeah. lizard was her mother. Mm-hmm. Not the no, that was, no, that that was fine. That was fine. But like I wanna go back and see because okay, like when you're watching a show that has a twist to the end or mm-hmm. new information to the end, you wanna go back sometimes and just see from the beginning. You know, like watching Love, Death and Robots, they give you the three symbols before the show actually starts. But they seem random until you watch the episode and then you right. go back. And like, okay, well, this was that, that was that, and that was that. Right? right like, right. I'm just wondering, like, I think this book could benefit from somebody going back and just taking a read again. And I think I'll do that. I, I, because, I mean, for starters, I have to take responsibility. This we is the book I chose. You. We volunteer you as tribute. <laughs> I yes. chose this book. That was, that was me. Right? <laughs> <sighs> All right. Okay, fine. so let's. Yeah. Uh, we so, got twenty minutes left mm-hmm. uh, before we we are. Um, we promised that we would wrap up because we try to keep this to two hours or less. It's never going to be less. Uh, <laughs> but I'm okay with that. Uh, so let's try to start. Let's do some closing thoughts. I think that we've talked a lot about the things that we didn't like, um, and a lot of the things that we felt didn't work for us as women or as women who often engage in work that is about things that are harsh realities. Um, mm. And about things that, I mean, um, several of us here are activists, uh, <laughs> and we have engaged in activist work in very deep ways, uh, and we have a lot of feelings around things like the patriarchy and sexism and and how we've been raised, and you know, we have a lot of feelings about stuff like this, and so we felt very strongly, I think, about a lot of the things that we felt didn't come full circle or sh- or came full circle and shouldn't have, right? Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the things that we liked. I will volunteer in this case to go first. I loved the VAR. Um, I don't know mm. that Shana or Seidel would have gotten this far yet. The VAR are a people, they're very early in the book, and Witta talks about the red people. That's the red people. Wow. They, you meet the red okay. people later in. I okay. love their society. I love they they were for me a utopian group. They yeah. were the group of people who this is what people are like and should be like. And this is this I loved. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it, you, you want to sleep with somebody, you sleep with them, right? You have Charan, that's okay. I married to this one, this be Charan, it don't matter who the who the biological father is. It's it's literally the village is raising these mm-hmm. children. These kids are everybody's responsibility. Everybody gets along. Everybody, you know, they have um, things like like the ju- juju is normal for them. Sorcery is normal for them. It's not that not everybody's a sorcerer, but everybody uses like the um, the, the stone heating stones. Fires. Yeah, yeah, the stone, the stone fire pit kind of things, and you know, all of these things. And I, they were um, for me their period, and I think purposefully for the folks in the book too. I think that their time with the VAR was like a nice light in what was otherwise some very gray clouds mm-hmm. <laughs> about this book. And I, I loved it. I loved their time there. I loved how they were able to engage with them. I loved what they learned from each other. I loved, um, I just, I just love the display of what a society that is not bound by these same rules could look like. Yeah. And it's for me, it was also a nod to the fact that I know all of this fucked up shit is happening outside of the sandstorm, mm-hmm. right? This is the writer telling us, I know all of this crap is happening outside the sandstorm, but there is hope right here in this place. And I, and this is, this is what the world could look like. This is what things could be. 
Right. Um, and I like that. And I hope that it is perhaps a, a foreshadowing of what the world looks like when she rewrites it. What if? We don't get to see. Yeah. We don't get to see what it would yeah. look like. Yeah, so that was what I liked. I enjoyed that. I think that this was a really great book for when it was written. And I think that if I'd read it 10 years ago, I would have had different feelings about it than I do now. Um, because now I'm conditioned to read works that are written with much more tension in the beginning <laughs> and with the much faster pacing. So this was different for me uh, compared to my, my normal reads. Yeah. Who wants to go next? I'll piggyback. I'll just piggyback because I'll agree that when we finally got, so we started out with this very patriarchal, very like, you know, anti-women, pleasure women choice. And then you find a society where it's just like, oh no, I beg my neighbor and I have his kid and I have your kid and, and we're all happy with that. Um, yeah. It was a nice dichotomy of like, like, just like you said, cure that. Oh wait, there's another way. And um and just the freedom that even the characters got to start experiencing because the, the girls walk off and they're just like, okay, bye. You know, and they go have a good time. <laughs> so I was like, yes. And then also- I like know, Fanasi was depressed as <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bro. It's her turn. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and then I also, like, again, I really appreciated the whole tribe, you know, issue because I, I get asked a lot in my personal life, you know, like, why- why don't you want children? And a big thing is, it's just, it's very difficult nowadays. It used to be a single salary would support the mother and she'd take care of the kids and then that's how it went. Now it's very hard. Both parents have to work. It's very difficult if you don't have family, if you don't have that and sometimes tribe. sometimes they have to work two jobs. Yeah, if you don't mm -hmm. have a tribe of family members to help you. So it's like for this, I love this because I'm like, yes, like have all your babies because the whole tribe's going to help you raise them. And so I, I just, I thought it was a very pretty picture that they painted. Um, and my closing thoughts uh yeah i like tension i like high stakes i like fast paces and is this a, again i'll say that i've said this with some of the other books is this a book i would have normally chosen no um book club pushed me to finish it and for that i appreciate the discipline that you ladies give me um <laughs> would i read it again no talia will read it again for me <laughs> <laughs> next i'm a masochist if we've, we've 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 established that i'll read anything i'll finish anything oh man i'll i'll piggyback off of that comment like i i I used to think of myself as a masochist. I used to think of myself as being extremely disciplined, um, where I would force myself to finish something that I start. And it's, it's, um, I still do that in, in some, in some ways, but I feel like the favorite thing I would say about this book was the fact that I was able to put it down and walk away and make the conscious decision to not finish it because of where I am at, like personally in this moment. It's just, it's not, have it, to me, I think it was a reflection of this is something that, of how much I've grown as a person, to be honest, in that, you know, it's it's something where, you know, if I was able to, like I said, separate the things that are going on for me personally right now from, you know, from this book and being able to, to step away and really give this book the um, the attention that it deserves then I feel like I, I could probably identify more, maybe better with with this with this book and and kind of give it its due. Just I'm not in a place to do it right now, and so I feel like that's kind of my 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 favorite takeaway from this book is that it's it's shown me how I've grown as an individual. Because ten years ago I would have been, you know, right there with you, Talia. I would have been like, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this. I'm gonna force myself to do it and like I don't care what else is going on. And I would have been a mess after reading it, even more so than I am mm. with just the partial read that I've done now. So I will I will thank you for giving us this book because <laughs> it's shown me <laughs> it showed me how much I've grown as a person. That like I can I can mm. step step aside from these things that are giving you know giving me additional trauma in my life that I don't need and I'm able to mm. walk away from it. So I, at least uh, I'll take that as my positive. Okay. Sidel. I love that. That's such a good positive that you're able to acknowledge that in yourself and not um, yeah. essentially harm yourself further um, <laughs> unnecessarily. Like that's such a big deal yeah. and kudos to you. I am not finished. I'm half, literally halfway through my like chapter 32. I will finish. 
I will probably not finish with the audiobook because I don't hate myself. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but I do want to finish because of some of the reviews that I've heard here and just kind of the varying points and the contrast of what you liked and didn't like about how it summed itself up. Um, I want to see where this goes and how it ends. And so far, I am enjoying it. So far, um, the bads haven't outweighed the goods in terms of some of the confusion and style of it. Um, the overwhelming bad is the narration. So, so I can kind of deal with some of the other things. Um, I definitely think for 10 years ago, it's a bold choice to discuss um, rape so vividly, to discuss um, mutilation so vividly, um, and to explore those themes, uh, even though we kind of disagree with how they uh, paid off at the end, mm -hmm. to even broach them. I think was very bad and important. And I mean, still a valid conversation to be having today because it's still something that's happening in various parts of the world. Um, and handled well for the most part in, in the sense that it didn't, while painful, didn't incite a kind of violent reaction from the reader, I, I, I don't think. Mm -hmm. it, it was painful and real, but it didn't overly offend, I suppose. Um, so yeah, over, overall final thoughts, I'm enjoying it so far. I'm excited to see where it goes next. Um, and I will have a better idea of if I love or hate it at the end. <laughs> Thank you, Talia, to round us out. Okay, so um, my TBR list looks at, the, uh, looks at how sci-fi, especially sci-fi written by women, have progressed from the time of our originator, Mary Shelley. And I've been looking at a lot of different things. And um, Kay, actually, you inspired me to look at this book from 10 years ago because, like you said, things change. And I wanted to be able to contrast the change with some of the more uh, recent, I don't want to say modern, but some of the more recent things that we've been reading. And something that somebody said to me like when i was thinking of picking back i was thinking of not starting back to write and somebody said if you can look at your old stuff and cringe that's good because it means that you've grown right like if you're if you have remained the same 10 years later then you have not grown and you should just stop mm -hmm. so like I, I, was, I was like, okay, we're going to look at it. And this book was considered groundbreaking at its time. And 10 years ago, it's not really that long, right? And I was like, okay, so put it up. And, and there were still some things that are very, you know, it's, it's, it's still, you know, I can look at it and I can see the brave choices that were made, but I can also see the hand of people who are uncomfortable with another person's story. Mm -hmm. And... I like that she took a lot of brave, bold choices. And there's a lot that she risked to get this book out. And um, I liked a lot, I, li I liked the book. I liked that it was a difficult read because I'm a masochist and I'm not. <laughs> um, but I think because of the, um, I, I liked the va. Like that was that, like, rising and falling tensions and so on that was a fall tension and to me this was like an inspirational point this was like her, her second inciting incident her second or third inciting incident that says look if i go through even if i die this is a society that my death could create you know what i mean so so it was she knew how bad it could be and she knew how bad it was going to get but she also had this moment this respite in which she could see how good it could also be and I, I like I like that I like that uh, the protagonist dies you know physically dies in the end, and again brave bold choices you're talking about a satisfying ending and this was gut wrenching, and it's a reminder to us even in activist spaces that sometimes we don't get the desired outcome sometimes we get docked sometimes you get attacked online you know sometimes you might even get attacked in person but this is the work that we're doing. And we're doing it to create the kind of society that we want to create. And, you know, we, we know people that have died for their causes. And as I, I looked at her and she was this hot-headed girl and she grew. She used her anger to grow. And I, I, I really, really like that. I really, really, really like that. 
And uh, some of the d difficult discussions, yes, that fed into my reading masochism, but I like that there was such a hope in it and that she knew that she had to go and find this prophet. Then she realized she was this prophet. And then she's like, listen, it, who fears death? And, 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 you know, that was her answer, like, not me. And this was like, when I got to that point, probably also because I didn't read, because I didn't do the audiobook, that I was able to get to that point mm -hmm. and enjoy. For me, it was a satisfying payoff mm -hmm. in the end. You know, so I, I, I did go into it with some biases. I did go into, it, you know, understanding where this book was, I don't want to say handicapped, where this book was um, done wrong. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I could have seen the influences and um, I could have seen the, the, the external influences and I could literally also have seen the pushback that she gave in this book. And I think like writer to writer, like I really appreciated that. She was the shoulders that you know the giants of today are standing on. Right? She's still very influential. She is still considered a pioneer in her field and so on. And I very much appreciated reading that from her. Like, yes, this is an old work, but if I read her old work and I read her new work, I can see that growth. Maybe she too is looking at she's like, oh my god, that book we all decide to read? Good lord. Right? <laughs> she's probably like block this page just so she does not think about it. But like she can look back and she can see her mistakes and she can see her own growth as a writer and you know like writer to writer as what we all want. We all want to not just come out with a great first novel, but we also want to come out with a better second novel. And if I come out with a great first novel, what in ten years I'm going to look back at this novel and hopefully I'm cringing because of the growth that I have made as a writer. And like I said, I, re I really really appreciated this book. I'm so glad I didn't do the audiobook. No hint is listen. Now that I am so now that I'm having, I get uh I'm I'm being treated for this and I, I feel like maybe a big part of my issues with audiobooks in the past is that I would wander, my mind would wander, um, and I would not pay attention to the audiobook, so I would have to read it, read it. And now that I'm uh like getting medication for this problem and I'm potentially treated for it and I don't necessarily mm. have to like I, I may not have that problem in future. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm gonna like get an audiobook and and now I'm just like maybe fucking not. No, look, audiobooks are great uh, for like doing the laundry, doing the dishes, walking the dog. Um, but not this one. Not this one. I agree. I agree entirely. I normally like, only ever put my books like, maybe to so one point one point four. Um, speed and this one I had to go 1.9 because she read it so slow, yeah. so awful. It yeah. was just they need to re record it with an appropriate artist, yeah. I agree, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like any any of the actors from Black Panther would do any of them, anybody um, else, anybody else, really, anybody else would do. <laughs> are you literally anybody? Oh, specifically, uh, are you? I so I started, I don't know who I was that, who was that, audiobooks because I. Ayo and Bucky from um, 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 Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Oh, Ayo yeah, is the... yeah, yeah, she's dope. Also, y'all yeah. need to watch um, Winter Soldier, Falcon and Winter Soldier. I just I, ha I, I have watched it. I just forget because when you say Ayo, I think of a different person. Uh, not oh that shit! One. No, not that one. Not not no. Yeah, no, no, no. not that one. My bad. Nice. Are you from yeah. Wakanda? You know, everything is, you know, everything is See, better in Wakanda. See, everything is better in Wakanda, mostly because that person doesn't exist there. Anyway, huh. so, <laughs> so, um, moving on, uh, I think that's actually it for today. Like, <laughs> so, so we, we're at an hour and <laughs> minutes. Hey, but you were um, saying something, right? Oh yes, she. You were saying something. See? Oh, I was I was just gonna give audiobooks a, a shout out because I started a couple years ago. Um, like I like the job that I do is just so intense and it's it, it, it's a lot and and care like I've I've ranted to you a lot um, in, in in your DMs about how stressed out I am and stuff and and just how busy I am. Like a few years ago, like I was literally traveling, like literally three, four times a month I'd be on travel and I, I think I've, I've racked up 
so many, so many hours, like having to sit on airplanes. And I got tired of, of working 24 seven, like a dog. And, um, so I started getting into audiobooks because I wanted to read and I had, you know, I was dragging stacks of books with me wherever I went. Um, and it, it just, it just became a way to still engage with, with reading without, you know, having to like continue to strain my eyes because, you know, I, I'm always on my cell phones, plural, um, for, for work and having to read hundreds of emails a day or, you know, reading through hundreds of pages of, of scientific reports and things like that. It was just getting to the point where like, I'm literally going to strain my eyes out. Um, I don't wear glasses yet. <laughs> And I want to keep it that way for as long as I can. So I, I reached out to audiobooks as a way to still enjoy books and the things that I love about, you know, different types of novels, nonfiction, fiction, fantasy, everything um, and stuff. And so I, I was definitely a person who hated audiobooks and would hate on people who would, you know, read audiobooks. And 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 now I'm solidly in that that audiobook category of like, I think it's a legit way of, of listening to books, especially when you get someone that that reads and narrates the story mm -hmm. very well it, it can is, change it is, the experience it can actually elevate the experience yeah. it really can and that's actually how i got into reading so many nonfiction like autobiographies was mm -hmm. because they would be read by the author and you know it, it just changes completely how um how you kind of interpret or understand the story because you're you're hearing them narrate it themselves it's like oh well it's it's it's, it's much more captivating that way. Um, okay, yeah. that's definitely a good plug for audiobooks. I will yeah. attempt it. I will attempt it. Um, yeah. But, okay, well, thanks. I mean, thank you all. Thank everybody for being here. It was so good to see Two you again, too, Saida. Right. See you guys. Woo! Yeah. Um, we may. What um, is our next book? Our next book. Now, I, now, our next book is The Chosen. The, our next book is my pick. Mm -hmm. I picked this one. I'm excited. Um, by I'm trying to pronounce the name correctly because I don't know how to pronounce this name correctly. It's either Nai or Nei or something like that. Naivo. Um, I need to like Google further how to pronounce this name correctly because I think it's an injustice to mis mis mispronounce people's names like this. Um, and I always do that. Like I always spend like a few minutes on YouTube, just like trying to find all of the correct pronunciations and then they never stay in my head and they never come out of my mouth. So uh, I apologize to all those who I may have um, disappointed in the past, but thankful. And it's called The Chosen and the Beautiful. If I am not mistaken, it is actually a Gatsby retelling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like the queer version, right? A queer and uh, people of color. Uh, it's a, it's, yep. um, it features people of color. And it just came out. It just came out on the first of this month. And I'll say the audio sample sounds good. So I think they chose a nice narrator, so. Great. Yay. So I'm very excited for this book. Um, and, and it's also, I think, a short book. It's only 266 pages. So I uh, hopefully it would not also be like like a slog for anybody <laughs> to get through. And I've heard yeah. great things. Like I, I actually have this author, this writer is on, they, there's some, they, they have some novellas um, that they've done with the same publisher as well that I have on my to-be-read list for the longest while. Um, and I've started and then haven't been able to get back to, but not for a lack of desire, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm really looking forward to this. It's got so many, so many great things about it. And it's a very recent book having just come out a few days ago. Um, so I can feel good about checking off, keeping my reading recent. <laughs> 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 oh, for there you now. go. Yeah. Uh, and that's cool. So please join us uh, two weeks from today at the same time, which would be three o'clock Atlantic slash Eastern. It's currently the same time. And read the book with us. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye. Bye.